Hey there you beautiful people, welcome back to PU's Tattoo. Today we're going to be looking at some tattoo TikToks. I've been getting asked for a while to do this kind of video so I thought why not. I've been sent some tattoo TikToks to take a look at and get a genuine reaction. This is the first time I've actually seen these videos so let's see what it is, let's jump straight into it. I mean, this first one is actually pretty good. I don't know if she's actually a tattoo artist or a tattoo apprentice, but it's actually pretty good. I don't know what the um, I don't know what the video is meant to imply, because um, most tattoo artists I know would really enjoy looking at this. Um, they'd probably be quite interested in it. So I'm not. I, I don't really know what she's implying. Tattoo artists would react to this I, I don't know but um yeah it, it looks like good clean work i mean especially on practice skin practice skin doesn't take ink all that well she's actually done a pretty good job so yeah i didn't realize when i got my first tattoo done I don't really know what that was meant to be. I don't. I know. Pro, this this is possibly looking from a tattoo artist's perspective, but I, I, that just looks like a three to me, <laughs> especially because I'm a, a, a I suppose a lettering kind of guy. It seems like uh, tattoo TikToks and stuff. They kind of try and make things uh, seem like something just to make some content out of it. I'm 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 not really understanding the past two videos I've just watched. I don't get it. I mean, if you guys see it, to, I mean, comment underneath if you guys know what the hell this is all about. But at the moment, I really don't. Sorry, we don't tattoo anyone under 16. I was born in 2008. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've been there myself. I mean, yeah, there's people that I've tattooed and they've told me the year of birth. Oh my God, it makes me feel old. Um, you gotta think I've been doing this now around about 16, 17 years, something like that. Yeah, it's one way to make you feel old, that. It, 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 it kind of puts into perspective just how long I've been doing this. <laughs> when I'm now tattooing people that were literally one year old, when I started tattooing. That is insane. That is a horrible feeling, by the way. I understand all tattoo artists are gonna go through that at some point, but Jesus Christ. Having a whole arm tattooed solid black. What's the meaning behind it? <laughs> Your arm looks like it's rotten. <laughs> so you're partially black now. <laughs> did it hurt? Yeah. Who did yours? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so blackout tattoos aren't really for me. Um, I don't really think they look all that good. Don't get me wrong, as a tattoo artist, to see a solid blackout, uh, I'm always quite impressed by just how clean it can look um, and how uniformly black it can look. But overall, I don't think it's all that much to look at. Um, and I, I understand that's not why people get them done. A lot of people tend to get them for cover-ups and things like that and just want to get rid of an entire sleeve in one go. But my problem is a lot of these younger generations are seeing people with blackout sleeves and for whatever reason they think it looks cool. And then without any tattoos on their arms at all, they're getting full blackout sleeves. This to me doesn't really make all that much sense. I mean, a while back there was this thing where I think it was called the Blackout Project, um, and it was literally just people getting entire sections of the body blacked out. The guy who would do it would absolutely brutalize these people. It actually wasn't anything to do with getting tattooed or anything like that. It seemed to be more about how much pain the guy could put you in, and it, it yeah, it, it just didn't sit right with me. But at the same time, I guess it's kind of like the new tribal. So, you know, we'll see how that kind of lasts. 
PSA, aftercare is important. I used an expired bottle of numbing cream on this three day old tattoo and it got infected. I went septic, wow. Sleeping at the hospital. I mean, yeah, that'll do it for you. Uh, a lot of tattoo shops won't actually use numbing cream and it's partly because, you know, sometimes you don't actually know what you're putting on your skin. There's a lot of fake numbing cream going around and a lot of it doesn't actually work or have the same ingredients that it says it does in it. The thing is, this might not have actually had anything to do with the expiry date or anything like that. It could have been the way that he's put the numbing cream on. Um, he could have had germs on his hands. Obviously, if you rub it around it's going to spread um you know any number of factors could have actually contributed to this but over the years from other artists i've seen anything from like you know a minor infection to a, a pretty much a skin graft you know these things are always a risk when you're modifying your body in any way i mean in the video he's saying that he puts numb and cream on a three day old tattoo I, I don't know why anybody would do that. I mean, after the tattoo process, the pain's pretty much gone, dude. You don't have to put anything else on it. A apart from obviously, you know, putting whatever cream your tattoo artist recommends. Don't be putting numbing cream on already done tattoos. That is a bad combination, my guy. That's just asking for trouble. <laughs> That's just asking for this kind of thing to happen. POV, trying to get rid of my tattoos so I don't have to go through more laser removal sessions. Okay, uh, I didn't actually see what you held up there, what was that? Facial moist, daily facial moisturizer. Okay, um, I don't know whether this is actually gonna work. I don't think it will. I, I, don't know what, I don't know what a moisturizer is gonna do to the skin. I don't really know if that rolling thing that she that she's doing and moisturizing is actually going to help the process at all um laser removal is laser removal you just got to kind of let it do its own thing i mean i could be wrong I'd, i've never had laser removal but at the same time i don't really see how that's gonna help it i don't know i mean yeah if, if one of you guys has actually had laser removal then you know comment down below let me know if i'm wrong but i don't know if it, I, yeah i don't know how it's gonna help in any way when a butterfly and heart tattoo girl thinks she's just like me. Hey girly, um, as somebody who actually looks like they have the right to be making a TikTok like that, I'm gonna go ahead and speak on behalf of the tattooed woman community by saying we don't judge others and all kinds of tattooed women are valid and sexy. Um, so maybe it's time to choose a different hobby other than being a pick me on the internet and let people live their fucking lives. Not to mention, as a tattoo artist, I see your exact tattoos walk through my door every single day. So you're not unique yeah. either. <laughs> Hope this helps. <laughs> All right, yeah. I've, I've got to be honest, that kind of made me uh, made me smile a little bit. Yeah, I get uh, Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's this this entire idea of, you know, people who have about three tattoos, um, calling themselves tattered and things like this. Um, look, you, you, you're still kind of new to the industry. You have no idea what you're talking about. When people are making these TikToks, talking about other people's tattoos and stuff, and they've only got two tattoos, just pipe down, sit down, just wait your turn until you've got more tattoos, okay? Don't start judging people on their tattoos or anything like that, because you, know, you don't know the reason why they've got them in the first place. I mean, when I comment on other people's tattoos, I comment more on the design aspect and also the, the I suppose, the execution of the tattoo. I never really try and put anyone down for having certain tattoos or anything like that, because, I mean, you know, you like what you like. Who am I to say anything about anyone's tattoos? I mean, I've got some tattoos that a lot of people probably won't like anyway, so I'm, I'm nobody to comment, okay? 16-year-old me wanted a wrist tattoo so bad without thinking. Yeah. So the problem with this is that, you know, the people who are actually willing to tattoo you underage are usually the people that don't really know what they're doing anyway. Honestly, my first tattoo was underage. I got my first tattoo when I was 16. And I think by the time I was 17, I had like five tattoos. My first one was actually the heartogram right there. You know, if, if you actually look at how they all go down my wrist, it's well off. Because the thing is, at the time, the guy put the stencil on like this when my arm was bent. So when I straighten it, it's just off. 
I'm kind of stuck with it now. There's nothing I can really do about it. But at the same time, you know, I don't really want to get rid of it either because it was my first tattoo. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, the people who are actually willing to tattoo you underage, they're not really going to do a good job because obviously they're not really a good enough artist to make enough money out of tattooing of age people. It looks like, I mean, it's still in. <laughs> I, I give them that, it's still in, the, the tattoo's there, but I mean that's probably the only thing I can say about it. Um, if you would have known better, you probably would have got it in the right place. See, what's the tattoo you'll refuse to do? Tattooing minors. Partners names, because they're bad luck, you shouldn't do it. I've just had people come in here like it was, they were their property, like tattoo my name on her, so we just don't do it. Yeah. I've, I've actually had it in the past where I've been tattooing, you know, somebody's uh, partner's name on them and about halfway through the tattoo I've been, you know, talking to them, asking them, you know, how long have you been together? And the response I've got was along the lines of, you know, oh, we've been together about two months. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I, I know it's going to go bad and I know in about two or three weeks after the, getting this tattoo, they're going to be back in trying to get that covered up. I wouldn't say it's a wise thing to be doing unless you've been together, you know, obviously about 30 or 40 years. I'm literally crying over my nails right now because they're so ugly. Oh my god, okay. This is what I wanted, okay? This is the pastels and this is what I got. Oh my god. I, d I don't even... I don't even know how you get that from <laughs> from the, the what they've been sent. It's like one of the eyes have just drooped completely. I just <laughs> it, 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 it's almost like the goat's pulling off stroke face, and it, it's not a good look. Uh, yeah, that's just so bad. A mistake with the the stencil, or you know they've rubbed off the stencil and had to kind of you know, freehand or something like that. I, I don't know, I don't get it. But yeah, that is that is real bad. Looking at it a bit closer, I can see it's an actual cover-up too. Looks like they've had like the letter T underneath it. So I can see why they've gone for something so dark, but obviously, you know, obviously you've gone to the wrong person to get it done. The execution of this tattoo is absolutely horrendous. I mean, the original tattoo, really nice, really well done, really clean. Some of those curves as well, insanely clean. Again, not my kind of thing or anything like that, but I can appreciate a good tattoo when I see it. Yeah, really well done. I don't even know how you get that so wrong. Honestly, I would not have paid for that. Because um, obviously this person has seen that before they left the shop. So yeah, I would not have paid. How I thought my back tat was going to feel. <laughs> how it felt. Yeah, she does not look phased at all. Backs are not an easy place to get tattooed. I suppose it depends where what you're getting tattooed. I think that some people do have a hard time sitting through back tattoos. They're not really an easy place to get tattooed in the slightest. I mean, she looks like she's powering through and she looks like she's doing pretty well. So yeah, fair play to you. <laughs> you know what? I actually love this video. I have actually seen this video before. I think it's absolutely amazing. I love the whole culture behind it and why she's doing it and things like that. Full respect to the woman, full respect to everyone that was there and supported her. Um, I, th I think this video was absolutely brilliant. There's something about things like that that are just absolutely beautiful to watch. I love that piece that she got done. I love her commitment to her culture and everything else. 
Yeah, this that yeah, that's that's an absolute brilliant tattoo. Great. What's a fair price for a sleeve? I mean, if you're looking at it on an average of across the UK wide, I'd say most studios are between four hundred and eight hundred a day. Okay, usually. let me pause that real quick right there. Bro, if you're asking for eight hundred pounds for a day session, you need your head checking. I mean he went for a minimum of four hundred pounds. My day sessions are three hundred pounds. Four hundred pounds up to eight hundred pounds, that's insane. You mainly find those kind of uh, prices around London and things like that where, you know, obviously business rates and everything else are a bit higher um, because obviously you're in London. <laughs> I, th I think some of the prices that some of these artists are charging these days are absolutely insane. And to be honest with you, the artists that are around about £800 a day, honestly, I don't really rate the work. You'll find the odd one that I actually look at and think, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's worth the money. The majority of the time, no. Sorry, no. 800 a day, usually. I'd say you're looking at maybe at least four, maybe six, maybe eight sessions to get a sleeve done elsewhere. If you work that out, you're probably talking anywhere from two and a half to three and a half, four grand. I mean, I mean where he says three and a half to four grand for a sleeve, that completely depends on what you're getting. I mean, I've seen people there blast out an entire Japanese sleeve in like two or three sessions at about 300 pounds a day. I mean, when people ask me about how much a sleeve costs, they always get the same response of, it depends what you want. Because, you know, it, it might take me less time, it might take me more time, depending on what you want and how much detail has gone into it and everything like that. So she could finish fixing it? Is this how it looks? Oh my God. I know the whole point of this is that she spelled the tattoo wrong, but the tattoo should not look like that. It should not be healing like that. That's not okay. It looks like she went way too deep and way too hard. And I saw the tattoo artist video a couple days ago and I was going to stitch it, but I was like, I want to see how this plays out. I need to see the tattoo and I need to see how it plays out. And now I see. I have my evidence. I will say most standard tattoo shop consent forms are going to say, you know, we're not liable or responsible for any misspellings or mistranslations of any script or symbols or text that you give us to tattoo. It is on the client to make sure that everything's spelled correctly, especially if it comes to a name or a date or something like that. But if it's a word that can be looked up or that is a common word to know or phrase to get tattooed, I think the tattoo artist should know how to spell it. But technically we are not responsible for it. And I think the tattoo artist said in the original video like that she's messed up words before and in that case I feel like you just shouldn't do word tattoos. I personally don't. I've never messed one up to my knowledge. At least no one's told me that I messed up their word tattoo. But I typically stay away from them for a couple different reasons. One being I'm afraid someone's gonna give me something that's spelled wrong like a name and then come back and be like oh actually I got it wrong. And that has actually happened to an artist in my shop before with like Roman numerals and in that case it's like you were supposed to get the Roman numerals right i don't know the date you know the date i think last friday the 13th a bunch of girls came in to my shop to get some tattoos and the one girl was going back and forth between getting some words she wanted to get divine feminine or just like a little vine tattoo of course i'm pro little vine tattoo simple nothing to mess up nothing complicated her friends are like no get the divine feminine it's so cute it's so cute it's so cute and i'm looking at it and i'm like are you sure you want this and i'm looking at it I'm like, I don't think it's spelled right. I just thought it didn't look right. It just did not look correct. And we Googled it and it was spelled wrong. And I'm glad that I caught it. I still tattooed it on them, but it was just like, this is why I don't like tattooing words. Because her friends were full in support of her getting a completely misspelled tattoo. None of them, nobody, it was at least like five people, including myself. And nobody else caught it except for me. Now back to my main concern, which is the tattoo. <sighs> Go to people who tattoo on your skin tone. Maybe this chick had work on her skin color before, um, but the tattoo should not look like that. And I'm very upset about that. And it's not the client's fault. All right, so I'm gonna kind of unpack that video. It was quite a long one, but you know, I'll, I'll kind of unpack it a little bit. All right, so the, the actual tattoo that was shown at the start of that, that was absolutely horrific. I mean, looking at it there, it, the whole thing just looks like a crater in her arm. So this can actually be caused by an artist running their machine too high or not knowing the correct needle depth and they've just really gone for it and overworked the skin. It can also be caused by the needle not fully coming out of the skin before they've moved it um, while doing the line. 
yeah it's it's just not good uh, I can see infections coming her way very soon I would really like and at the same time not like to see how this heals um, or how it healed if it's healed um, yeah it's just a really badly done tattoo all around the other thing that I want to talk about as well is uh, I think the artist here is called Mia Lane very well done to you for noticing that your client's piece was wrong uh, not a lot of artists do and total respect to you yeah I totally agree with everything she's saying a lot of artists do refuse to do lettering purely for the fact that you know they are scared to get it wrong I mean personally I've had it where the client actually got their own son's name wrong and spelt it wrong even though beforehand I actually asked them multiple times if it was correct if it was spelt right I was actually asking if it was spelt correctly because to me it didn't sound right or it didn't look right to me um, which I know I could be wrong um, turns out I wasn't anyway halfway through the tattoo her son walks in sees the actual tattoo being done and by the time he actually mentions that it was wrong we'd already done it I think her response to that was that's okay we can change the name so yeah <laughs> it didn't go so well he wasn't too pleased and you know he wasn't as touched as he should have been by this kind gesture one more video one last one here we go come tattoo with Harley <laughs> So, <laughs> so most of you will actually probably recognize the arm that's in there. Um, that's me and that's my daughter. Uh, that was actually my daughter in the video. She's actually shown quite a big interest in tattoos lately, especially the ones on me. She's also got to the point where she, you know, she's drawing tattoos on me and whatever spaces she can find and you know, her sisters and things like that. So. Yeah, that's great. I wasn't expecting to see that last one, but yeah, that's 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 a really good video. That it's a, a bit of a, a hopefully a, a look into the future there, but you know I don't know. But I, yeah, I love that. I love that video. That's definitely one of my uh, one of my favourites out of today's today's lot. Yeah, that's that's kind of made my day. Yeah, that was a good way to end the video. So I guess that's it. Now before you go, I just want to mention what I said in the last video. Now on the release of this video, I will be posting a link to a form that people need to fill out if they want to actually join the giveaway. I will be doing two giveaways. I will be giving away a tattoo machine. You guys will have to wait for my next video to find out which one, but I will say that it is worth 300 pound. I'll also be giving away something that is actually quite rare to the industry and actually a bit of tattoo memorabilia. So if you guys are actually interested in winning these things, then take a look at the community posts on this channel. Members of the channel who are interested in winning the tattoo machine, um, you will be given another form to fill in. Members of the channel, make sure you fill in both applications to make sure you're in with a chance to win both of those prizes. The winner of the giveaway will be announced live on a live stream. If you're interested, I hope to see you in the live. At some point within the year, I will also be bringing out my sketchbook, Letter on 101. I'll be giving more information on that closer to the release date. Anyway, thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.